and then accompany that with a text from science writer Nadia Drake, kind of expanding on the um, what we learned from Cassini, the science that we learned from Cassini. Um, so if you look at a glitched out version of this project, you can kind of see that the path around Saturn here is angular, and it even pierces the planet itself before its demise, uh, which is bad. It should really only hit the planet once at the very <laughs> end. Um, so this kind of this is kind of a naive render, and it, and it speaks to the heart of the project, which is using uh, real NASA data and drawing thousands of, of XYZ positions where Cassini was at various moments in time, and then connecting the dots. Um, and then kind of I'm changing the opacity of line segments um, as I uh, progress in time. Um, and, and the angularity is kind of a trade-off of doing things in the browser. So like, if I were to download as much uh, uh, time-wise data into the browser, it would start to form a, a, a smoother curve. But if I download that much data over 13 years of, disc of Roots, then it's going to crash phones, basically. All right. So the, the data itself is called ephemeris data. I'm using the JPL Horizon system to download all of Cassini's locations in 3D coordinates relative to Saturn. And then I'm also downloading positions of Cassini's subjects, the moons themselves. And this Horizon system, um, it contains precise data on hundreds of thousands of objects in our solar system, in the past, and into the future. Um, kind of an amazing system. And for this project, I actually kind of used the web interface a little tediously. But um, for future projects, I've actually found this Astro query Python library, where you can kind of do this kind of thing programmatically, fetch this data programmatically. Um, so when I get this data, and I'm starting to render it, I'm not an, ex I'm not an Astro expert. So kind of right out of the box, I need to see if I'm representing it accurately. So this is not accurate right here. So I'll explain that to you. And the image um, on the lower left, uh, from the perspective of Cassini, you can see Titan in, in front, and then the smaller moon Tethys right behind it. And they're in close alignment. Um, my visualization, um, in, if you look at magenta, there's a misalignment. So from the perspective of Cassini, they're not, it's, it should be a straight line, roughly, to kind of see that they're aligned. Um, and so this, this kind of problem was correct, corrected by understanding the granularity of the data that I needed. Because um, if, if the moons, the moons move so fast, um, and so if I don't have data down to the minute, they can appear in the wrong place relative to where Cassini was, maybe at a particular hour, um, so the point of talking about all this is that if I'm concerned about this, um, it's, it's, I'm concerned about it for legibility. So does the rendering express the topic or does it have kind of subtle distracting errors that kind of make you wonder what this is? Um, so, but more fundamentally, um, it's to say that kind of scientific accuracy is fundamental to my job. and people like myself at news organizations, and, and, and kind of in addition to uh, you know, high standards of visual fidelity. But I don't want to sacrifice the science 